Hello, Aries. It's all Boba God Tarot. This is your November Tarot card reading. Let's have a look at what comes up for your... Let's look at the love life. Let's look at the love life. And, um... Yeah. Aries, let's go. All right, Uranus. Surprises to come. This is your potential for sudden change, enlightenment, and awakening. Uranus. Also bringing in the Aquarius vibes. Uranus. Oh! <laughs> All right, so the energy is freedom-loving, rebellious, idealistic, and technological. We've got the Aquarius vibes flowing. Just a flowing. Your next card is Taurus. And the energy around you shows the abundance of nature. It is rich, earthy, and productive, yet relaxed and slow. So, a little bit of surprise. Sensing the individuality. If we're talking about an individual. So, Taurus is also a very stubborn individual. So, okay, we have a lot of, there's cat activity, so I'm sorry, got the little pause there. So Aquarius energy, Uranus energy, it shows potential for networking. So just kind of be open during this time to just saying yes to nights out, social events, networking events, friends of friends of friends, mutuals, you know, like connections like that. If you hear about something where you can go be social, I would say yes, all right, because you might be surprised. All right, and then we have the Taurus energy. Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus. This is a lover. It's a lover. Romance, pleasure, luxury, beautiful things, art, appreciation of all those lovey, tenderheartedness moments and feelings. So, you know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's one of those like people with the rough edges, but on the inside they're ooey gooey, gushy, like Cupid, and just wanting to be loved, just wanting that romance. So there's that Taurus energy to this. So it's like surprise, surprise, surprise. It's a little loving, but the you know, tough exterior, rough exterior, maybe, maybe not even rough exterior, but like more discipline, like no nonsense ish, or a very structured type person, especially financially. Taurus rules the second house of income and possessions. So we're looking at somebody who's like, they're very individualistic. They're very like set in their ways. They're very like, it's almost like you'd have to enter their lives and just kind of partake in, in where you fit into their life. Because this person is very, very, very firm on who they are, right? They have a love of creativity, beauty that, that might excite you. you. You know, you don't get bored too quickly. And um, again, if you're opposed to that type of connection, you might, you might be surprised. Because the surprise isn't just like, hey, surprise, I'm here. It's more like enlightenment and awakening. So it's like never knowing what you'll be, being something you didn't expect. And however way you want to interpret it, something you didn't expect. So I didn't expect to feel this way about that thing. And I didn't expect to want someone like that person. All right, so here we go. Let's see what's going on with Aries in the love life. Aries in the love life. Aries in the love life. Okay. Knave of coins. Knight of cups. Six of cups. Eight of cups. Ace of coins. Five of cups. Okay. Do you see the push and pull of being practical and then also thinking with your heart, thinking with your head? This is a very emotional topic. Clearly, we asked for love. We got all the cups. We got mostly cups. Right, and cups, and of course, earth, they grow together. They go together. So very Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy attracted um, during November. Mm, I wanna say earth, but fine. Taurus, again, I'll reiterate the Taurus most of all, as well as Virgo and Capricorn. Those types of energies might be coming in. This could be the person, sun, per, sun moving, sun moving, ah, tongue tied. Sun, moon, or rising sign. So you'll feel some of that energy. The knave of coins shows that like it, it might start off as somebody that you might know who's like a, 
in, I don't want to say inferior, that sounds insulting, but you know, you might be their superior. This might be related to work. Now we're hitting the work zone, the money zone, and the earthy zone where it's a very regular, casual occurrence, something that's like routine. So it makes you feel like somebody who's involved where money is made, where the earning is made, where the wealth is made. And so, yeah, it does give that Taurus potentially Virgo Capricorn vibe with the knave of coins. But it does feel like somebody who's either younger than you or somebody who's less experienced than you. So then we have facing that is the Knight of Cups, which shows that this person is really actually about the gestures of love and the gestures of kindness that they have towards you. They actually really care with their feelings, with their heart. Um, and this leaves them open to taking action on those feelings. The Knight of Cups is known for being an action-oriented individual. We see two faces, so we know that it could be, you know, that could be you looking at them. It could be the, the imagery of you looking at them with the practicality and the feelings facing off, kind of, you know? Like, because, again, if it's somebody at work, you might be like, eh, it's not even worth the risk. Why, why make it awkward at work? It's already awkward at work. Or why well, make my job more difficult if things don't work out? Well, you know, or just weighing it at, at all. Thinking about the pros and cons. Looking at what, how each one affects the other. We have the Knight of Cups. This is more of a mature take, so I like that. It's a good critical thinking skill. And then we have the Six of Cups, the Eight of Cups. And listen, it's a lot of water. It is a lot of water. It is a lot of self-reflection and introspection. It's also some of that nostalgia. You know, it's some of that, like, not wanting to repeat past mistakes. So maybe some of you have dated someone in, at work in the past and are a little bit jaded by that. It might be a little impulsive for you and it might be a known issue to you. You're like a fire sign. So sometimes you might be like, oh, I get caught up in the moment. But I think that with the Six of Cups and Eight of Cups, there's more of the feelings and there's more of the intuition involved here, or triggered at least. I think that Six of Cups leaves a little bit of history in there, which is probably a good thing in this, if you're going to connect with somebody. If you have some history, um, you might trust them a little more, or you might trust what is happening between you a little bit more. Again, so this is all a surprise. So might be a little confusing to navigate at first and so you're just kind of sorting out your feelings most of all six of cups is just throwing out the but back in the day so that could just pertain to you being in a situation like this in the past or you having some history with the person um then the eight of cups does tell me that again the self-reflection is there obviously you're doing some critical thinking but also just kind of the balance of the being practical and again not letting your emotions make your decisions so, I, and it's funny, it's, it's something that you know, you know, because I feel like you think that uh, your feelings become this weakness that you have to manage. So it's something that you're aware of having to manage your emotions. But again, there's this other side of, of areas where you guys are impulsive yourselves, or you get like bored easily. So when you're excited about something, you kind of want to move on it. So I understand the self-reflection aspect of this reading, the Eight of Cups, um, going inward and maybe just observing maybe testing this person, making sure that they're worthy of some sort of risk, um, or just kind of connecting with this person, seeing what they're like, maybe getting to know them a little bit better so that you know what you're dealing with instead of getting caught up in like a pretty face or uh, limited exposure. You know, you know them at work. You don't know who they are outside of work um, or in business, but not, you know, I mean, you might be falling in love with the suit. You might be falling in love with the outfit. But at home, it's gravy stains, baby. It's gravy stains and the wig comes off. Okay, with the Ace of Coins, I do think there's an opportunity with this person. There's an there's a opportunity to meet up and have some tangible evidence of time spent with this person. Um, Ace of Coins shows that, that there's initiation in that. So I guess you ask them, they ask you, whichever it is. There's some, like, somebody is direct and it's like, hey, yo, would you like to bite this apple? And I say bite this apple because I... See the snake right there. And the snake's like, hey, seduction. You know, this person like slithers into a convenient situation and says, hey, we're going for uh, drinks after this. You want to come? <laughs> the blushies, the will they, won't they energy, you know, 
all very surprising, right? So the Five of Cups here we have at the end of this reading is just like, I feel like it's baggage. Doesn't it feel like baggage? We do have the Six of Cups reminding us of the past. And even though it's not in reverse, so we don't have to like think that you're like dwelling or harping on the past t too much, uh, the Five of Cups does speak to just this feeling of acknowledging and focusing more on what you lost as far as relationships and the overly too much focus on what you have lost is taking away from what you have learned, what you have gained from an experience that really, I guess, affected you. Again, emotionally, it's like, I gotta go, in. I have to think about this, I have to really, you know, because my feelings, they can get away from me, I could get hurt again, I can... So I think there's a lot of overthinking, if I, if I, if I may. A little overthinking with that. But this person, I think, is, if there's anything like that Taurus energy, at least you know when they come, they come correct. They're like, sure. Borderline sure. And if they're not 100% sure, they won't, they, won't, they won't put that out there. But again, you might be surprised. You might be surprised by this person. Um, I want to keep going because there's so much water here. It's like, well, yeah, I get it. You're feeling stuff. You're feeling stuff. But what what really is going down what's going on so all right eight of coins okay keep focused on work valid valid keep your keep everything consistent don't let this situation or a person or your feelings for a person uh, interfere with the the workflow the regular business as usual flow of your life um and yeah it's like almost just like doing that is will reward you like, it'll be, the reward of being consistent is being consistent, and you'll position yourself well. Instead of, like, deteriorating, of course, if you start calling in sick and stuff, like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> Keep it consistent, make that a goal, stay focused. All right, we have the King of Wands, which means there's some action here. Um, there's some, again, we, we already knew there was some initiation of action, but now we know there's, like, excitement to it. That might be you. That fiery energy shows, like, De like determinedness and exhilaration I guess so like there might be a thrill to this it might be like a hookup casual thing it might be a, just an exciting like I was in town once for business and then I left or this is our little secret or, but there's th this king energy so it feels like there's an authority to it where somebody has to say go um, and it is probably the king of wands so I guess if you're dealing with a fire sign that's up for debate but it might be you calling the shots on what 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 goes next All right but be careful with that i feel like it could be just a casual thing because of this tower sign tower card of course is associated with your planetary ruler mars mars is conflict mars is aggression but that's also ambition but because you know the tower is like kind of disrupting your entire roots your oh, sorry your entire routine yeah sure roots like your whole home is on fire. You're gonna have to rebuild that. You're gonna have to start over from scratch, which is in some perspectives a great thing or an opportunity, but in other perspectives, traumatic and untimely. And dare I say, a surprise. So I feel like that would shake up the foundation of what you know to be normal regularly. I mean, normal in life, like, you know, I go home, I do this, my routine. I think it might be this this connection with this person might be very disruptive to that routine, borderline destructive, um, I guess. But I think that that warning of, you know, stay focused, keep your routine afloat, keep going to the gym, keep going to work, don't call sick, keep pre-booking your this, keep, you know, and keep that maintained. Um, maybe we can avoid some of that tar tower energy being way too destructive. This could also, on the contrary, as I mentioned, could represent ambition and it could also mean just tearing down whatever you've come to know as normal today and and embracing something new and exciting and a surprise in a random sudden turn of events that could be hey move in with me or oh, okay i guess i'm moving on to this place that i've called home for the last 20 years oh okay you know want yolo i again i could understand under that circumstance why you'd have to do some soul searching but i feel like um there, of course, would be hesitation on something like that, especially with the Five of Cups lingering over there and suggesting that there's some pain from the past that is being focused on and some hesitation. So 
there might be just a lot of emotional intelligence to share between the two of you since we, our original spread had the a lot of cups. But I, you know, I, now I want to know about the tower. Now I want to know about the tower. Eight of swords. Yeah, self limitations and blocks um, that you can break free of. I think that there's something destructive in a relationship that goes in a certain way that repeats the past. You know, if you see yourself actively repeating a past mistake and just hoping for a new outcome, well, I got news for you. Only you know your energy. Only you know your cycles. So if you find yourself with a similar feeling, similar person, similar situation, similar behavior, you know that there's part of your personal transformation, your, your karmic card, that is about to, you know, repeat the cycle until you learn the lesson. You know, some people never show up again. Their cycle's complete. Some people keep showing up. Gotta learn. Gotta learn. They'll show up in different forms, they have different bodies, different situations, but the same energy. Navasaurus, there's that drama, there's that gossip, there's the drama and the gossip. Okay, so I feel like this person's like a burst of a surprise, like, it could be a good thing, could be a random, exciting thing, sure. I guess you guys may have an MO with that, because you get bored easily, that you, you know, are with somebody and will have to, they'll have to keep it exciting, you know? Or, oops. So, sorry, I hear cats fighting. Um, Milo, darling, you know what, I gotta break this up. Milo? Oh, darling's sleeping. Okay, 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 sorry, sorry. Terrible way to end the reading. But yeah, that's your reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. Sorry, I'm a little rattled. The cats were fighting. And I don't know if you guys heard the mail, the cry for help. Um, but yeah, spray them with water. Everything's cool. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be. We're gonna beat this thing, this jealousy thing Mr. Milo has going on. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.